When I was looking for something new and exciting to replace my aging Pixelbook, I had a few key factors in mind. First was that it needed to be a two-in-one. Second, I needed a built-in pen. And third, it needed to be powerful. The Samsung Galaxy Chromebook checks off every one of these boxes. That alone isn't enough to justify the purchase of a $1,000 Chromebook, but after two months with this laptop, I've discovered that there's many reasons to put this Chromebook on your list of upgrades so long as your main priority is not battery life. Marcus here, great to see all of you again. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook and how this measures up one year after its release. So the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook came out in April of 2020. It retailed for 1,000 US dollars and it was immediately panned by reviewers. If you looked up the reviews at the time, they can be summarized as looks good, feels great, battery, terrible. <laughs> because it's been a full year now, the quote unquote successor to the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook, the Galaxy Chromebook 2, has now been released. Because of this, the price of the original Galaxy Chromebook has dropped by about $300. Currently, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook is sitting at the $699 price point, but that may change depending on when you're watching this video. The Samsung Galaxy Chromebook, as far as I can tell, is only available in the US. So if you don't live in the US, you have to import it, which is exactly what I did. I purchased and imported this unit myself, after taxes and shipping, this came to almost 800 Canadian dollars, which translates to roughly 650 US dollars. So keeping that price in mind, that's the perspective that I'm going to be looking at when I'm talking about this device. Not $1,000, but 650 US dollars. Some of you may also be asking, why did I buy this instead of the Galaxy Chromebook 2? Well, in my opinion, the original Galaxy Chromebook is far superior in almost every way for about the same price. The specs are better, it looks better, the screen is OLED, and the list just goes on. So let's start with what's under the hood. The Galaxy Chromebook sports a 10th gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, 256GB of NVMe storage, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.0. In terms of the build, the body is near perfection. On top of that, this Fiesta Red just makes the laptop even more attractive. After looking at the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook, other laptops just don't have the same wow factor. In hand, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook feels amazing. I like the boxy square feel of the laptop. Something this light really needs to have a good grip when you're carrying it. And that's exactly what these corners do. Looking over the device, it has been machined precisely. And the only thing that I can find wrong with this is this strange little bump on the side of the keyboard here. It looks like it's been done to accommodate the USB port, which shows you just how finely this chastity has to be machined in order to accommodate such a slim profile. On the left-hand side here, you have your headphone jack, you have your USB-C port, your volume rocker, and your left speaker. On the right-hand side, you have your pen, your second USB-C port, the power button, your LED indicator, and your micro SD card slot, as well as your right-hand speaker. So my first nitpick about the body here, and I have to say this, is the LED indicator. Aside from letting you know it's being charged, it doesn't do much else. I wouldn't mind that, but this thing is blinding and distracting. It's so distracting and so bright that I actually opted to cover it up with some tape. That's how bright it was. All right, getting back on track. Underneath, you have your vent for circulation. This is a passively cooled device, meaning there's no fans. The idea here is that heat is generated and is passed through the frame of the laptop in order to cool it itself. While this keeps the laptop quiet, it does have its downsides. The i5 is a powerhouse and because of that, it generates a lot of heat. When reading early reviews, I saw people talking about how hot it can get. And I thought to myself, it couldn't be that bad. Well, folks, it gets hot enough that you would not want this on your lap. In fact, it got so hot that I started to get worried about how this might start damaging the laptop itself. So I opted to buy one of these, a laptop cooler. Yes, one of those. I really needed this for the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. 
It made a significant difference in keeping the laptop cooler. Having a fan circulate cool air into the chassis made a noticeable difference on how hot this, the body of the laptop would get. Um, without a fan, it would be uncomfortable to touch the top of the laptop right here where the processor sits, but after adding the fan, it just feels warm like you're charging your cell phone. Now, after saying all of that, I want to remind you that this is only during processor intensive tasks such as video calls. For other activities, just like typing and browsing the internet, I haven't noticed any sort of heating issues. On to the display. So the display is 4K AMOLED with all the benefits that you would get out of an AMOLED display, such as deep blacks, great contrast, and on this AMOLED display, you get 100% Adobe RGB coverage. I have no complaints here. The only issue I have with the screen is that you can clearly see the digitizer on light backgrounds or white backgrounds. At first, I kind of thought my screen was defective, but on closer inspection, it's just the layer for the digitizer. All right, let's talk about the keyboard. I love the keyboard. It's easy and comfortable to type on. There's very little noise and I can type for extended periods without feeling any sort of fatigue on my hands. On the top right hand side is the fingerprint scanner and I gotta say it's my favorite part of the Chromebook. To be able to use your finger to unlock is much more reliable and easy than typing in your password. Alright, let's talk about the pen. One thing that was a huge selling point for me was the included stylus in the body of the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. A pet peeve of mine is having a stylus capable laptop or notebook but having to store the stylus separately. With the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook, this wasn't an issue. And in fact, it was a selling point for me. One issue I do have with the passive stylus is that there's input lag. For me, I mainly use the stylus to sign documents and the lag just throws me off. I find myself needing to redo my signature a couple of times because of that input lag. But if you're drawing or you're coloring pictures, it should be fine. Let's move on to the speakers. The speakers aren't terrible, but they could definitely be better. They lack bass and are not very loud. On a normal day of video calls and watching movies, the speakers are at 100% volume. so fast, Morty. You heard your mom. We've got adventures to go on, Morty. Just you and me, but never your dad. You want to know why, Morty? Because he crossed me. That being said, there's only a few situations where I found myself wanting more volume, especially during movie scenes where there's a lot of dialogue. People are talking. I want to hear what they're saying. Talking about the camera and microphone. The camera, I'd say, is subpar for a premium device. If there's not enough light, you start to look like an oil painting. The microphone, on the other hand, the quality is good. None of the people I've spoken to had any issues hearing me. Um, it's not as loud as the Pixelbook or as clear as the Pixelbook, but it does its job. The secondary camera here on the uh, keyboard, um, it's serviceable, but its usefulness is questionable. I haven't found myself where I've said, hmm, I really need to take a picture with my laptop. This is especially true considering it's much faster and less silly looking to just grab your phone, um, to pull out your phone and to snap a picture. Your phone camera is definitely going to look better than this Chromebook's camera. Okay, talking about battery life, here is another downside of the Galaxy Chromebook. Every review you'll see out there will comment on the poor battery life um, of the Galaxy Chromebook. And yes, what they say out there is true. Battery life is unfortunately between four and six hours. I usually have my screen brightness around 50 to 60% with a couple of tabs opening and listening to music while doing work. And that's where I'm getting that four to six hours of battery life. Now, if you're doing something more processor intensive like video calls or gaming, the battery life will be shortened significantly. Also, due to the nature of OLED technology, white or light images will draw more power. So I've made sure that all of my apps are on dark mode and the wallpapers that I, I'm using are as dark as possible. For students or people on the go, you may find yourself making compromises such as carrying around a battery pack or adjusting the screen brightness so that it's very low and draws less power. So knowing the battery life was poor, why did I buy this? Well, I work at home and 90% of the time I'm beside a charger. 
Where I will start sweating is when I start working in the office again or from traveling. But for anything around my house, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook is totally fine. All right, so here's my final thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. At 1,000 US dollars, the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook is a tough pill to swallow, but at the $600 mark, you're getting a gorgeous, lightweight, powerful Chromebook with an OLED display and a stylus. The Achilles heel of this Chromebook is its poor battery life and its heating, and there's really no remedy for either one of them. That being said, I will be keeping the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook as my daily driver. Well, that's it everybody. If you'd like to get the latest information or get in contact with me, you can reach out to me on Twitter and Instagram at my handle pux31 or on YouTube and Facebook at pux3. Thanks again, everyone. It was great to see you again, and I'll see you in the next video.